Britain's longest-serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, passed away at the age of 96. Buckingham Palace said she died peacefully at the Balmoral Castle in Scotland. King Charles III, Queen's eldest son, takes over as Britain's new monarch. The Queen reigned for 70 years and was last seen with UK's new Prime Minister Liz Truss. The Queen's funeral will take place on the 19th of September. 96 rounds of gun salutes, one for every year of the Queen's life, were fired at several places across the United Kingdom. The royal family will observe a period of mourning that ends on the seventh day after the Queen's funeral. India has also declared one day state mourning on 11th of September as a mark of respect on the Queen's demise. Former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, paying his tribute to the Queen in the House of Commons, said she was the rock on which modern Britain was built. UK's new Prime Minister Liz Truss called her one of the greatest leaders the world has ever known. The Queen saw 16 Prime Ministers during her reign, with the last being Liz Truss. To discuss this further, we're now joined by Adela Suleiman, Washington Post reporter. Thank you for joining us, uh, Adela. Could you give us a sense of the mood outside Buckingham Palace, the scenes uh, that you witnessed when you went there? Yeah, I mean, I would just say that the UK is waking up today and it's feeling extremely rudderless, you know, without without a figure that we have had present for over 70 years. Um, and I think it comes on the back of a new prime minister here in, in England as well. So there's a real sense of uncertainty about the future. Um, I would say, though, the fact that King Charles has travelled from Scotland to Buckingham Palace just in the last hour or so has really been quite a reassurance and the crowds have been extremely happy to see him and have been chanting God save the King, which is something that most people are still adjusting to here. Right. Uh, Adela, what is the way forward in terms of protocol? When does the Queen's funeral uh, now take place? Um, so as we're hearing, we think the funeral will probably be around the 19th of September. Um, there's a very strategic plan that's been in place, Operation London Bridge, uh, for some time, which really is meticulously uh, details what will happen in the event of the Queen's death and uh, the accession to the throne of King Charles. So um, as the, the royal family just said this morning, there'll be a period of formal mourning. Um, we've seen football matches have been cancelled here in the UK, big public events, concerts. Um, so there'll be, you know, a real somber mood, at least for the next 10 days in the build up to the funeral. Um, we expect her body will be uh, lying in state in Edinburgh and will probably move there tomorrow and over the weekend. People we don't know yet, but we assume the public will be able to pay their respects. Um, and then the body of the Queen will travel to London, where she will also lie in state. Um, and parliamentarians in Westminster will be able to pay their respects and then also the public before um, her formal funeral in Westminster Abbey. Um, and then we know that the body will be buried at Windsor Castle with her husband, Prince Philip, who died last year. Right. Uh, and who are the world leaders who are expected to come? We were, report, we were reading that President Biden may be attending her funeral. Yeah, it's not been confirmed yet, but we know that he has intimated that it's a possibility. We expect a lot of global leaders to fly in, especially countries that still have royal families, such as in Saudi Arabia and in Gulf countries. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a very big event. She ruled for over 70 years. You know, as you said, she had dozens of prime ministers, I think 13 US presidents that she was you know, aware of. So she has really spanned decades and, and lots of world leaders, even if they don't have a monarchy, are keen to pay their respects and, and travel here for the funeral we expect right and in terms of uh, uh, the protocol for king charles iii what are the ceremonies what are the events that are likely to unfold over the next few days yeah so as i said he's he was at his mother's bedside when she died yesterday and he and his wife camilla who will now be known as the queen consort um, have travelled to Buckingham Palace today to greet the crowds. Um, we think that he will meet with the new Prime Minister Liz Truss and then around six o'clock local time here in London, he will make his first national address to the public as King Charles III. 
Um, and then tomorrow there will be a council of accession at St. James's Palace and they will formally proclaim him the new king. Um, it's unclear when his actual coronation will be. When the Queen became Queen Elizabeth, it was, I think, a 16 month wait between when she acceded the throne and when she was coronated. So um, it could still be some months before his coronation takes place. Right. And my final question, Adela, uh, how does the UK media today remember the Queen? And which would be some of the question marks uh, that we would like to seek answers for as King Charles III takes over the throne, some of the challenges that he could possibly face? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think the Queen is a universally well-liked character here in the UK and, and and in many other places as a person. And I think that the regard of Charles is not the same equally for William, for Harry, for other royal family members. Um, so that's going to be a challenge for him, is winning the public support and the, winning the public adoration that the Queen enjoyed. Um, Charles had a much more colourful past, as many people know, with his marriages, with his children. And I think the fact that he's been the longest um, heir in waiting here in the UK has really um, given him quite an established um, reputation here. So it will be interesting to watch him transform and the public regard transform. And, and I think another thing to note with the challenges he might face is the broader Commonwealth. And, and we already know now that countries, especially in the Caribbean, are using the opportunity of the Queen's death to kind of stake their claim as moving towards the public. So we may see more of that um, in Charles's reign. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Adela Suleiman, for joining us on the program. So what does the Queen's demise mean for the monarchy? I caught up with Andy Street, Mayor of West Midlands in the United Kingdom, and began by asking him about Queen Elizabeth's contribution to the monarchy and uh, Britain's politics and their people as well. Take a look. The contribution of the Queen is just immense, very difficult to put into words. But I think for over 70 years, she has been the uniting force for the whole country and indeed the whole Commonwealth. And the way in which she was able to relate to everybody, whatever their background, whatever their faith, whatever their politics, has really drawn people together. And she's seen this country and indeed the Commonwealth through some very turbulent times for being that. So we will miss that incredibly. But I am confident that actually the new king, Charles III will actually do the same thing. It's the feature of the monarchy over centuries. It rises above all divisions and is that uniting force. So I hope Charles will continue in the spirit of his wonderful mother. Right. Uh, there are also a lot of reports today questioning whether King Charles III will get the same respect in England and also across the world. What do you feel? It's a very interesting question. I'm sure he will get the same respect because people here understand that actually he is now the monarch and it is the institution that has the respect. I'm sure he's very well aware today, though, that he won't necessarily have the affection and the sort of love and warmth that the Queen had because she had years to demonstrate that. All the people she connected with individually and, of course, how she connected with people, even she'd never met them because people had that affection. Mm -hmm. So, of course, everyone would accept that's going to take time for the new king to build in the same way. Right. <clears throat> now, over the last uh, few years, were there also a lot of uh, questions in the UK about the role, the future of the monarchy, whether such an institution is even needed, uh, the rights and privileges that were enjoyed? Do you think some of those voices will uh, grow louder now with the Queen's demise? Uh, absolutely not. I think what this uh, moment of transition from one, um, one sovereign to another actually demonstrates is the incredible support that the institution of the monarchy has in Britain. Mm. And, you know, given all the challenges that this country faces, the political differences that there are, I think people really do appreciate that having a head of state who is not drawn into politics, mm. uh, which is the usual model around the world, that gives us a huge uniting force. So I don't think there'll be many questions, if any, about the future of the monarchy. Uh, if I were to ask you one question on her biggest contribution 
over the last decade, what would that be? Biggest contribution over the uh, last uh, decade? Well, I think uh, uh, the, 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 the values that she uh, has shown in how she's done her job, because actually what she's shown is an incredible selflessness. She's shown that public service must be done in a way that, that uh, demonstrates inclusivity. It shows equality between everyone she dealt with. So her contribution is to show how the job should be done, and then it will be done in a similar way by her successors. So it's setting that moral standard that everyone else must aspire to. Right. Uh, the biggest challenge that she faced in her 70-year reign, according to you, perhaps the difficult, the most difficult and darkest hour that she had to face and overcome. So, so the challenges that she faced over the 70 years, well, I'm sure she would have said that they were many. She had some personal challenges in her. The mother and the grandmother, I'm sure they accused her on her mind. Uh, but perhaps the single biggest challenge that connects 1952 with 2022 is to steer Britain through its changing role in the world. Back in 52, there was still a British Empire. Uh, there was still all the post-war uncertainty about Britain's role in the world. And now, of course, there is a Commonwealth of Equal Nations. Mm. And I think the, the skill with which she's navigated that change over many decades really speaks volumes to her intellect and her leadership. Right. And finally, uh, Mayor Street, uh, what do you think will be the key challenges for King Charles III going forward? What are the values that he will have to uphold? And what will be his role in the politics of uh, the United Kingdom? So, interesting where you ask the question, because actually his role in the politics, in a pure political sense, is nothing, is nil. And what he actually has to do uh, in, is demonstrate political neutrality, which means that everybody, whichever side of a political debate you are on, still sees him as the sovereign, the, the head of state of the country. And so actually to stand back from the hurly-burly of politics is probably going to be a personal challenge to anybody. Mm -hmm. But his mother has demonstrated just how critical it is to do that. Uh, so I think that's actually, uh, as an incoming, uh, an incoming king, he'll have incredible goodwill. Everyone will want him to succeed. But demonstrating that neutrality, but continuing to show the way in which he does business, that morality, that will be the path he's got to navigate. All right, uh, Mayor Andy Street, uh, thank you so much for taking out time to uh, speak to us here on CNBC TV 18. My pleasure. All right, uh, so that was uh, Mayor Andy Street uh, paying his tribute to the Queen and also tell us about the challenges that lie ahead for the UK monarchy. We're going to take a short break, but coming up, India and China agree to disengage at one standoff point in the dark. The moves comes ahead of a potential meeting between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping at a summit in Uzbekistan next week. A special discussion when we're back.